Hello there, Harry Potter fans. Now this is a fantastic beast. But now that the excitement of Harvest is all over with, you may be asking yourself, hmm, how does a combine even work? Is it some sort of wizardry or sorcery inside that machine? How does it get the clean corn up in the tank and spit everything else out the back? Well, hang around and today you're going to learn how the combine gets the kernels off the cob, how it separates the kernels from all the other junk, and you'll even learn why a combine is called a combine. Get out your notepads and number two pencils, kids. It's time to learn. We started this channel to share our love of agriculture, to show you what we do every day at our full-time farming jobs and on our own little ranch. I hope you enjoy it. Hi guys, have you ever wondered just how a combine works? I mean, what happens inside the combine to take the corn off the cob, stick it in the tank, and shoot everything else out the back of the combine? Actually, it's very simple, and today I'm here to tell you all about it. I've drawn these two terrible drawings of combines because that's as good as I can draw, but this is going to help us understand what's going on. Now today, I have corn heads on my bad drawings of combines, because we've already talked extensively about our flex draper and how that works. So today, we're gonna to focus primarily on corn. So I don't know if you can see this or not, but I've drawn a stalk of corn in green right here. Once the stalk encounters the snapping rolls, it has no choice to go down towards the ground because the snapping rolls are turning in opposite directions, turning towards each other like this, and they're positioned very close together. Take a look at the snapping rolls on our combine. See how they're turning towards each other? They also have a corkscrew on the front of them that guides the stock back into the snapping rolls and prevents it from getting pushed over. Once the stock is pulled down towards the ground, it fits between the deck plates, but the ear of corn can't fit through. And that's what tears the ear of corn off the stock. When the ear of corn lands on the deck plates, the gathering chains are there to guide that ear up and to the back of the head, and then the auger in the head pulls the ears all towards the center. Once the ears of corn have made their way to the center of the head, they enter the feeder house. This piece right here between the head and the rest of the combine is called the feeder house. I've heard some people call it the throat before, but most people call it the feeder house. And it has one job and one job only, to get the crop from the head into the separator. At the top of the feeder house, we have a piece of equipment called the accelerator and it's just spinning really fast and its job is to throw the crop back into the rotor as fast as possible so that it wants to travel through the rotor instead of just spinning around. Now the rotor is a long cylindrical piece inside the combine and it's spinning this way around and around and around and the crop wants to make its way up and to the back. And as it's spinning, it's spinning very close to what we call the concave. The concave is just a stationary grate that sits underneath the rotor, and it's very close to the rotor. It has holes in it so that when it scrubs the ear down across the concave, it tears the kernels off, and the kernels can fall through into the rest of the cleaning part of the combine. Now, you may wonder how exactly the rotor gets the kernels off the cob. Here, take a look at this. I'm here at the Wapsipinicon Mill Museum in Independence, Iowa to show you a little demonstration to help you understand how the inside of a combine actually works. What we have here is a really old hand crank corn sheller. And I'm going to use this to show you how the combine gets the kernels off the cob. Now, this may be an old piece of equipment, but things really have not changed all that much. There's really only three things that you need to get the kernels off the cob. You need something that moves, which is the uh, hand crank portion of this sheller, and you need something that doesn't move, which is this spring-loaded door that holds the corn against the moving part. In the combine, the movement is the rotor that's turning all the time, and then the stationary part is the concave or the grate underneath the rotor that has holes in it to allow the kernels to fall through. The third piece of every puzzle 
is you need a small enough gap between the moving piece and the non-moving piece that you can't get a cob of corn through there without tearing the kernels off. So here we go, let me show you how this works. On this old unit, you put your corn right in the top and then you turn the crank. And as it works through there, it tears the kernel, kernels off the cob. And then you're left, with, you're left with the cob coming out the bottom. Okay, so once the rotor removes the corn from the cobs, and the kernels and a bunch of other junk fall through the concave into the shoe augers and get augered back into the cleaning shoe, that's where it gets really kind of complicated. But I've got a color-coded drawing here to try to help you understand it. Okay, the stuff that falls out of the rotor is symbolized by the black lines right here because it's very dirty. It's got a lot of corn stalks and a lot of junk mixed into it. It falls onto the chaffer, which I've got drawn in green right here. The chaffer is the first layer of screening to filter out any of the junk that you don't want in the tank. The fan down here is spinning away and blowing air up through the sieve and the chaffer. And that, mixed with the shaking motion of the sieve and chaffer, helps to raise everything up and get the lighter junk to blow out the back of the combine. If you ever want to try this at home, take a handful of gravel out of your driveway and a handful of leaves and put them in the same hand and shake them up and down on a windy day. Won't be long and you'll have just a handful of rocks and all the leaves are going to blow away. That's the same idea that we're working with inside the combine. The air is going to blow the leaves and junk away and leave the kernels inside. Now, the stuff that makes it through the chaffer, I've got drawn in green here. It's partially cleaned. It falls onto the sieve, and that's in blue. The sieve is your last screen and your last chance to clean the grain before it goes into the tank. So, whatever makes it over the chaffer blows out the back of the combine. Whatever makes it through the chaffer lands on the sieve. Now, the sieve is trying to shake the rest of the junk out, so whatever falls over the back of the sieve goes into the return grain elevator, because it's not quite clean yet, but there's some grain in it. So it goes into the return grain elevator and dumps back into the rotor and it gets a second chance to go through. Whatever actually makes it past the sieve goes into this blue clean grain elevator and goes straight up into the tank. So here's the quick rundown of the path of the grain again. Through the rotor onto the chaffer and it either goes straight out the back of the combine from there or down onto the sieve. Now if it goes past the sieve it gets into the return elevator and goes back into the rotor for a second try. If it gets through the sieve, then it's perfectly clean and it makes it into the clean grain elevator up into your tank. And that, ladies and gents, is how a combine works. Now for soybeans, it's essentially the same. You run a little bit smaller clearance between the concave and the rotor, but that scrubbing action of the rotor near the concave is what dislodges the beans from the pods. Everything falls through and the cleaning process is exactly the same. Now, onto the big question. Why is a combine called a combine? Doesn't that seem like a strange term? Well, it's actually really simple. A combine is called a combine because it combines the three major tasks associated with harvest. Reaping, threshing, and winnowing. If those sound like weird words to you, reaping is just a fancy word that means cutting down and gathering the crops. Threshing means to loosen the seed part away from the part that it's growing on. Uh, more specifically in corn, we would refer to this as shelling. But in cereal crops like oats, rye, wheat, this is referred to as threshing. And then winnowing is the process of separating the seeds from the chaff. The stuff that you want to keep goes in one spot. The stuff that you want to get rid of goes in another spot. Way back in the day, this was all done manually by hand. You'd be out there like the Grim Reaper, cutting down your crops with your sickle, and then you'd be gathering them in and threshing your wheat by beating it with a flail, and then throwing it up in the air with a fork on a windy day to get the chaff to blow away. That's how you would winnow it. So things are a lot different now than they used to be. I personally am extremely interested in the history and all the processes and the machines that were developed throughout the years to try to make farming easier. I love going to antique power shows over the summer, so I won't bore you to death with a long history lesson on how the combine was born. But here is a picture of a threshing machine that I saw at an antique power show this summer. 
Here's some footage of the machine in operation. As you can see, it's being powered by a big old steam engine connected to it by a long belt. A threshing machine is basically the same as a combine on the inside, except for the fact that it can't go anywhere while it's in operation, so it's not able to perform the reaping portion of the harvest. You have to gather your crops and bring them to the threshing machine. You can see these guys standing on the wagon pitching the bundles of wheat right into the feeder on the threshing machine. And then here's a little video of an antique corn sheller in operation. They've got the corn stored on the ear in an old corn crib, and then the ears go up the conveyor into the corn sheller, and it shells the kernels off of the cobs and puts them in two different places as well. I hope you feel a little bit smarter than you did before. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop a comment on the video and I'll try to reply to them as quick as I can. If you liked the video, hit the little bell so that you get a notification every time I put out a new video. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.